So the point I'm making is this, right? Number one is that the scientific method is limited by its very nature. Do you accept this? Can we define the scientific method? Okay. The scientific method itself is based on a few things, right? It's based on empiricism, induction, and uh, observations. So define empiricism first. Okay. So empiricism basically is the notion that we can come to truth by our senses. So then, ultraviolet radiation, how do you prove that it's it observation, you're using your observations. You're how? using your senses to observe things. Okay. For example, if you were to observe the birds here today, this is what the scientific method is based on, empiricism. What's physically observable, what you can observe through your, via, via your senses, basically. So even if there's an instrument in between, it's still, I'm using my... So using, using your senses to draw in that information. Even if you're converting the external into something that you can understand. Yes. Because what you're doing is you're using your senses to observe the information. Well, right? Using the conversion method. You agree that's still observation. Okay, so say for example we can't actually detect ultraviolet radiation, but if we have some kind of pigment that we know changes because of ultraviolet radiation. Well, you know those figures. Those it. figures that you detect and you observe on the screen on a computer screen. You're observing those. Yes. Yes. And then you observe those, and then you use the reasoning on the data, and you come to a conclusion. Yeah. Okay, so this method itself can be flawed because your senses can let you down. But we agree that we can use a conversion, some kind of converting device to move it into something. But when, but when you convert that something, right, when you convert that something, you are still using your senses to take in that data. But you're still converting it into something, so that doesn't... But you are, but you, wherever you convert it into the last end product, you are observing that through your senses. Yes. yes. And your senses can be fallible. So For can example, every other process and so can every other chain and yes, link. Yes, everyone's can. But the point is, if they're fallible, then it's possible that what you observe, your senses let you down. It's possible. Your method lets you down. Yes, your, 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 the empirical method can be flawed. That's the okay, we'll agree on that. Second thing, induction. On, I'd just like to add a caveat. That means that all methods can be, some, all methods of observation can be flawed. Yeah, all okay. methods can. Because your senses, all methods are going to be based on your senses and your senses can be fallible. Okay, yes, we'll agree on that. Second point is that it's based on induction. Define induction. Induction is when you go from a general set of data and you make a more specific conclusion. That's what science does. Not necessarily. Okay, give me one example where you have the entire set of data. For example, I'll give you an example. Can anyone observe every single bird that exists on this planet? No, but that's the entire basis of taking a sample. That's the entire basis of science, right? You take a sample and you make a specific conclusion. You take a sample to prove or disprove your theory. Yes, but you make a specific conclusion based on the sample. Yeah. The, yeah that's induction. You're going from a general sample to a specific conclusion. So my definition of induction means that this proves this, proves this. That's my definition. No, no, that's, not, that's not what induction is, but the induct inductive method of reasoning is when you go from a general sample or it's a general set of data and you make a specific conclusion. That so, is what induction is. Okay, we'll call it induction for the sake. And that is what scientists do. You, I mean, if you look, pick up any basic textbook on the philosophy of science, when you look up induction, that's what it would say. Okay, so we'll call it induction. Okay, fair enough. So you're going from general to specific. Yeah. That's, your, that's your definition of induction. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, so that in itself, there's room for error if that's the case. Why? Because there's possible. Say you observe 10,000 birds right. over a day. Yep. And you make the conclusion that all birds are black because all the birds you observed were black. Okay? No, because that on the, you're only making that you're only making that statement based on the fact that your sample is representative, right? Yes, but this is what scientists do. They try and create a representative sample. Yeah, they go, but they go from a specific sample, a general sample, and they make a specific conclusion. Yes, but if you say that means that they're if you say in your ten thousand birds, you say that two hundred are brown, two hundred are green, blah blah blah. No, but Therefore, can't you make that same assumption? No, that no but to make sure yes, you can. But again, there's room for error. Yes, but there's room for error in that yeah, methodology, okay, which we just that's agree. That's true. But again, so we can conclude that this there's, can't give you 100% truth. True. Yep. Okay. okay. So these are a few of the reasons why the scientific method is limited. Now, the second point I was making was that there's certain realities that science employs which science can't validate. Give me an example. Example. Okay. Logic. Logic. Right? So define logic then. Okay. Do you believe, let's discuss it, right? Do you believe the laws of logic are universal? What are the laws of logic? Okay. I'll give you one example. The laws, one of the laws of logic is that the law of non-contradiction. Define. Okay. So can this mic be in my hand and not be in my hand in the same time in the same way? Uh, so the microphone is either in your hand or not in your hand? Yeah. At the same time in the same way. Can it be both at the same time in the same way? Not that I know of. No. So would you say that's a universal law? No. 
So it's changing. It's possible that it could change. If that's the case, then you can't do science. Why? Because when you do your observations, right. and then you use your reasoning and your laws, your logic, to come to the conclusion. Right? So we come from the sample being your ha your microphone in your hand. No, no, forget that. That's just an example for the sec the law, one of the laws of uh, logic, right? But the point is, you're saying the laws of logic are not universal; it's changing. No, I'm saying that the microphone can may not, in fact, be in your hand. No, no. Okay, we can discuss that point. That's the case. But what I'm saying is, we we're discussing specifically one of the laws of logic, which is the law of non-contradiction. Can the mic be in my hand and not be in my hand at the same time in the same way? So we're agreeing that things can't contradict each other. Yeah, logic. Yes, so can we agree? Yes. Yes. We'll go for yes. Can't be in his hand and not yes. in his hand at the same time. So yes. That's not we'll possible. Yes. Just get on with what you're getting at. Go on. We're defining the laws so we're of logic. So we're having a conversation. Go on. Carry okay. on. Then. Get on. So, so basically, we agree to that. Yeah. yeah. The universal. But the point I'm trying to make is that the laws of logic are universal and unchanging. Do you agree to that? I wouldn't say they're unchanging. They may, there could be some additional contradictions. But here's the thing. If they can change, then you can't do science. Because when you do science, you, go, you take your observations and then you employ your reasoning on those observations and you use your logic to come to conclusions. Then you can't trust your conclusions. Yeah, why not? You can't trust your conclusions. Why should you trust your conclusions? So then how, how do you believe in science? You don't. What basis do you believe in science? Yeah. What science tells you? Science is basically you've taken your observation and using the current logic and the current theories, this is what you think has happened. Okay. You take your observations, you employ your reasoning, and you employ what? Your logic. Laws of logic, right? Now, if you're saying they're changing and they can't be universal, so how do you know you can trust the conclusion you come to? You can't. You can't trust the conclusion you come to? No. Do you believe in evolution? Yes. Is that 100% true? I don't know. So why do you believe in it? Because most of the evidence says it is true. So is it true? I'm, at the minute, I'm saying yes. I think okay. it, I'm on balanced probability, I think evolution is true. So it's, it's possible it's wrong? Yes. So you're not 100% certain? No. But so you don't believe in it, really? But, I, but I'm saying that all the current evidence available suggests that evolution is true. But you've just shown that the, the, the method of evolution... The method is extremely untrustworthy because you don't even believe that the laws of the logical universe. Why is it untrustworthy if there's uncertainty? I'll tell you why. Because you're taking observations, you're using your logic and reasoning, yeah? You've just shown that the laws of logic are changing. That's what you've said. I don't believe that, but that's what you've said. The laws of logic are changing, right? If they are changing... the laws of logic could change. If you don't mind, please. Oh, we're being filmed. You can come here. Obsession Hello again. Obsession filming everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the laws of logic... Could change. They could change, yeah. right? So, so, the, so that means it's the conclusion yeah, that I mean, the scientists came to, that evolution oh, may be happening. Okay, quick to switch yeah. it off as well. it's, for all you know, it's wrong. It could be. Yeah. Okay, so you can't be certain then? Yeah, you can't be certain. That means you can't be certain of anything? Yeah. So if I say to you, God exists, and that's absolutely true. What do you think? I think, well, first off, we agree that nothing can be certain. No, no, that's what you agree. I don't agree that. I think nothing can be certain. So my statement, God exists. Okay. Is that true or false? Well, the first question is, who is your God? One, one second. We'll address that for once God in general. Allah, Allah we'll determine exist. this after so. Yahweh exists. So it's extremely disrespectful for jumping to a conclusion. Loads of people are different So it's extremely disrespectful for jumping to a conclusion. The question is, the first question is, it does God exist? Is what are talking about? We're going for a to jump in. The whole kind of thing. The whole point of our discussion is to come, reach a certain destination. Okay. Anyway, back to the point. Back to the point is that, we on the point now. The point was, does God exist? Does I said God exists. Is that true? I'm going to ask you to define God. God, I'll define him for you. But what do you think of my statement? Uh, you say that God exists. My first thing is the question: What makes you say that? Where is your Where is your current logic and proof? But here's the thing: You've just shown the laws of logic can change, so you can't rely on them. Yeah, but it can be. It could, there is. I'm saying that when some when I can't believe in something exactly, right? You, did you say the laws of logic can change? Yes. Okay. Did you say that you, they're not universal? Yes. Do you believe that they are part of figment of the imagined mind? Sorry. They're a development of the mind. Yeah. Okay. So they're subject. Yeah. Okay. So you can't trust them. Why not? So how? Okay. No. Okay. Here's the thing. I know the laws of logic are universal, unchanging, and valid. That's what I claim, and I believe that's because God is the only inference the best explanation for them to be this way in the absence of God you can't claim them and as, as you're doing you're not claiming them to be universal but then you then we go back to the building when you said that but that's irrelevant the point the point is you're saying that they change yeah what you're saying they're not trustworthy no okay so you can't do science I can't no I can't why can't you not trust the current logic I'm saying there should always be an option that the current logic could be wrong there's always an option that the current thinking could be wrong. No, that's fine. But what I'm saying is that you to even come to your scientific conclusions, you can't do that anymore. Why not? Because you said the laws of logic are changing, subjective. 
Yeah, that's why you go and say, this is my logic, and then you go and talk to other people. You, you can't trust your logic? Exactly, that's why you ask other people. So why do you, you can't trust anyone's logic? We're talking about logic as the laws itself. They're universal, they apply to everyone, right? Everyone uses logic, right? No, so you can't trust your logic. So, so that means you can't come to any conclusion. So what's wrong with that? So when I say God exists 100, percent this is 100 percent truth. You can't refute that because you have no faculties remaining or that you can trust to de decipher what I'm saying is wrong or right, true or false. Let me think about this. Hmm. Hmm. So am I saying that I? So I'm accepting uncertainty. And therefore, that means I you're can't. You're saying you're not certain of anything. Yeah. So, for all you know, you can be a guy in a mental asylum who's been given a tranquilizer, and you've been made to feel like you're here right now. You're dreaming. It's possible. Isn't that the entire basis of the film, The Matrix? No, but the thing is, is it possible? Yes. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Everything you know is wrong. Yeah. It's possible evolution, as you understand, is wrong. Yes. So, how could you be certain of anything? Oh, yeah. You can't. Yes, but you can't be certain of anything because I can. No, because everything you have. I tell you why. Based on your senses. No, no. Er no, I, I can be certain that the laws of logic are universal and unchanging and, and immaterial. I can be certain that my reasoning is valid. I can be certain of these things because God is the best explanation. God explains these things, but in the absence of God, there is no explanation. I'll ask you, I'll be fair, I'll ask you, give me a better inference if you have one that shows that the laws of logic, if you accept the laws of logic are universal and unchanging. But why must laws of logic be universal and unchanging? Let me ask you about another group of laws. Laws of mathematics, are they universal or changing? Uh, they're changing. Those are mathematics are changing. Yes. Isn't that, that's another nail in the coffin for science from your perspective. Why? Because Could science... You no, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because science uses mathematics. Yes. To come to conclusions and promote its theories and so on and so forth. Yeah. So if you're saying the, the laws of mathematics are changing, two, 2 plus 2 can equal 4 and 2 plus 2 can equal 5. But there's proof. They've come up with the proof. That so, so tell me then, are they changing or universal or unchanging? Could change, they could they change. change. They could change. Yeah. So tomorrow, two plus two can be six. Someone could prove it. Yes. Okay. So that means you can't. That means another thing that science uses to validate its theories is is untrustworthy. So what are you using that validates your okay. theory? Let me ask you another thing. Laws of physics. Go on. Are they changing? Well, everyone knows that they're changing. That's a given fact. Laws of physics are changing. Yeah. Okay. So you can stand it till you can fly tomorrow. It's possible. possible. Yeah. So that means you can't be certain of anything. No. Why must there be? Why can't? Why do you have to be certain of anything? Okay. So Again, that, how do you okay. So let me ask a question. Why are you here promoting evolution today? I'm not. You know, but you're in. Isn't that what the Isn't that what the table there is doing? No, they're promoting rationality. Okay, they're promoting atheism. Yes. Okay. They believe atheism to be true. Atheism is a philosophy. But you believe it to be true. What is true then? Well, it's another big problem. See, so if you can't, you don't know what truth is. You have no certainty. You don't know if your laws are logical valid. If the laws are logical valid, you don't know if your reasoning is valid. Yet you're making claims, standing and making claims, and teaching people something. Yeah, but you can't prove that God. You can't prove that God is. Is that true? Is that true? What? Well, is, is I, just, I say that nothing is certain. You said I can't prove that God exists. Is that true? Yes. Okay, but you're claiming certainty right now. I think you just claim certainty. Right now. Fair enough. He's refuting your claim. See the problem. See the problem. You just claim certainty, but you just said you can't be certain of anything. True. That's a very good point. But then again, you're claiming certainty. I am because I have an anchor to claim certainty via. So you're saying that God is your anchor, and therefore. God is the only anchor that you can claim certainty via. Laws of physics via, laws of mathematics and laws of logic and validate your reason.